We're now all set to bring to you our next panel discussion on the digital future of urban rail. Today, we are witnessing a mass migration of the rural population to urban areas, which means that the urban population is slated to account for 75% of the global population if we look at 2050. And as urbanization places more and more emphasis on a well-developed infrastructure, urban rail lines and stations are only going to grow successfully, which means more and more opportunities for all of us sitting right here. And of course, talking about all this and more will be our esteemed panelists. So may I extend a very warm welcome to each of them. A round of applause as I extend a very warm welcome to Mr. Sadev Singh Rati, Director, Project and Planning, GMRC. Let's hear it up for him, please. Let me also present to you Mr. Devendra Dattamishra, ED Rolling Stock, Maha Metro. A round of applause as we'll uh, very soon be joined by Mr. Ashutosh Shukla, Director, Mobility Segment, Schneider Electric. Welcome, sir. May I also present to you Mr. Sudhir Chiplunkar, COO, LNT Metro Rail Hyderabad. Let's also have applauses from our audience. So, Mr. Praveen Goyal, Senior Vice President, Business Development and Technical Services, Railway Business, SBU, KEC. And let us also present a warm welcome to our moderator, Mr. Kumar Keshav, CEO, Deutsche Bahn India. A round of applause as I welcome all of them to please join us up here on the dais. And uh, let us look forward to a very engaging 40 minutes of discussion post which we'll have 15 minutes for our audience. So may I please request the kind presence of all our panelists and our moderator up on stage. May I remind all our guests that we look forward to your questions. So the most engaging audience members, we have some very interesting uh, gifts which we'll be presenting at the end of the evening. Hello, good afternoon everyone. I have got a very distinguished panel on my side, uh, probably, although she announced, but uh, probably one of us, each one of us probably should mention, so that everybody understands who is sitting where. I am Kumar Kesha. Uh, I am right now uh, Chief Executive Officer of Dow Shibani Engineering and Consulting Engineers Limited, Limited uh, which is an operator company for uh, uh, Delhi Merit RRTS Corridor. Hello, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, my name is Praveen Goel. I am Senior Vice President in KEC. And as you are aware that uh, KEC has been very active uh, as a contractor, as an EPC contractor uh, in both railways and metros. So I am taking care of metros in KEC. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ashutosh Shukla. I represent Schneider Electric for the mobility segment. Good afternoon, all. My name is Sudhir Chiplunkar. I am Chief Operating Officer of LNT Metro Rail Limited. As you know, LNT is operating the Hyderabad Metro, which is a network of 70 kilometers. Happy to meet you all. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sahidev Singh Rati. I am Director of Project and Planning with Gujarat Metro Rail Corporation. Recently, we have commissioned 40 kilometers of the line in Ahmedabad, and we are constructing another 70 kilometers in Gandhinagar and Gujarat Metro uh, Surat uh, city. And uh, before that, I had experience of nine and a half years with Delhi Metro Rail Corporation. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Devendadat Mishra, Executive Director, Rolling Stock in Maharashtra Metro Rail Corporation for Pune project. Uh, as you also know, uh, Pune Metro first phase is uh, 31 kilometers, out of which uh, about 12 kilometers we have already commission inaugurated uh, by PM in uh, last March and further section in very advanced stage another three four months we will be able to commission this phase one and uh, I take care for rolling stock uh, there are 34 train sets we are procuring and uniqueness of uh, uh, novelty of this uh, our rolling stock is that it is aluminium body uh, car body rolling stock we have implemented and uh, first time it has been manufactured by some Indian company in uh, uh, rolling, uh, aluminium car body in India. So that is uh, ch certainly challenging, but uh, a lot of new, I mean, new learnings have been as an asset. Uh, we are hoping for the best. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so uh, today's topic is the digital future of urban railways. Let me set the mood. Uh, the creation of a smart environment and user-friendly transport system is among the highest priority areas in the world. And rail transport is a vital part of this process. 
Radical advancements are happening in business environment, facilitated by digital technologies, which requires the existing business models and strategies adopted by various railway organizations and the operators to be brought up to the date. Now probably the old way of things are little disruptive. So today's topic of discussion, the digital future of urban rail is therefore very, very relevant. And thorough understanding of the concept of digital transformation is paramount in the development of rail transport in today's changing economic scenario. Main technologies and solutions which have accelerated digital transformation in last few years, which we all know, Internet of Things, I will be, uh, probably all of you will be surprised, in 2018, the total connection on Internet were more than the population of the world. So total devices which were connected to internet is more than the number of the people who live on the earth. So that's how the internet of things is. Cloud computing, big data analytics, and of course automation, robotics, which are many things which are happening. So with this background, take it forward for the today's discussion on digitization or digital transformation of the urban railway systems or the railway systems as a whole. I will start first with Sudhir. <laughs> We all look to Hyderabad Metro, uh, Pride, and it's such a wonderful thing which is happening on a PPP project, so I start with you only. Infrastructure managers, manufacturers for the industry are using digitization or digital technologies for creation of added value for all the customers, including their vendors, including the passengers, including the satisfaction of the commuters. Now, there are many things. Improving the capacity, improving the utilization, improving speed of services, improving quality of services, and the passenger satisfaction. So I just want your opinion or inputs, how exactly it is to be taken. Are there some priorities which we should set? All These are all integral because ultimately all of them contribute to the revenue. And since you are a private operator, probably nobody can better talk about the revenue model as compared to you. I have now joined your stream, so maybe after some time I will also speak about it. So, so the, what you can say Thank you, it. sir. It's a very pertinent question today because as we are moving into the world of digitalization and today's digitalization has a lot of value for the urban transport as such because um, there is a whole gamut of activities on which the digitization can support us as an operator and all the aspects Sir, which you mentioned, like asset utilization, optimization in operation, passenger experience, all have an equal importance and every aspect of digitalization needs to be harnessed so as to provide the ultimate goal of providing the best services to the passenger at the least cost for the operator. So with these two main objectives, on Hyderabad Metro we are moving in each of these directions uh, I am very proud to say, sir, that we have a Maximos IBM implementation for our asset management, uh, which we have been using uh, for past many years. And of course, we are continuously improving it so as to provide a lot of managerial information, though the work at grass level is already being done. And at the same time, we are also looking at other IoT things as to how to we further take to the next level for the condition-based maintenance. How can we have the technology help us to minimize our downtime, how to reduce our maintenance periods, and also to capture live information through the passenger running train itself. So there are some technical inputs available where I need not have a maintenance block or we don't have a post revenue hours, we can, in revenue hours only, we can do a condition monitoring of track, overhead equipment and things like that which are the new trends I believe in world over taking place and also shortly it will come to India. On passenger experience front, also we are moving closely with the technology. We have recently introduced digital payments, digital ticketing, which is QR best. And we last few weeks back, uh, two weeks back, we also added one more aspect and that was about the QR ticketing through WhatsApp. So now, <coughs> Hyderabad Metro is the first metro which has done this, where you can just have a WhatsApp number and on which you say hi and you can just get a link and you can buy a ticket seamlessly. So, <coughs> for that you need not 
to be at the metro premises or you can use any any platform so this way you are saving your time and um, uh, your overall travel experience improves because you don't have to be in the queue you don't have to wait for uh, currency exchange and all that that is one aspect then also we are using the technology to optimize our train operations we are continuously monitoring the afc data and which throws us the input about the ridership the link loads and through that we are able to optimize our train operation plans and with the whatever resources we have we are able to best use them for the passenger services i think with this i I'll thank, thank you, you very much sudhir you have done wonderfully probably all of us have to learn <laughs> and a lot is to be done also further which is happening in hyderabad and so many metros are doing now my extreme right is uh, sitting sadeep singh he is my classmate he is my batchmate in um delhi metro we were together and we are in the industry together from the day one first of all i want to congratulate ahmedabad metro for uh, inauguration of by honorable prime minister the entire corridor that was wonderful <laughs> so sadeep because your expertise is basically in the project delivery construction industry is also changing rapidly not only civil i am talking when i am talking about construction industry means all the systems also and probably with your experience you can talk even about that for timely and cost effective solution in delivery of mega projects like metros or um, uh, what i am doing uh, ncrtc or high speed rail projects can you talk about some initiatives which ahmedabad metro has done or what more which you foresee in coming years which can help this industry to even implementation of these projects in a very timely and cost effective manner the uh, ahmedabad metro uh, per se we did not do any great thing on digital front uh, but many initiative which are normally we should do on digital front we uh, did them in a partly digital format like we adopted the bim for all our underground construction and uh, we incorporated uh, ai related issues in our design process uh, the net result uh, i will say like uh, rib platform of shenader was being talked about in the earlier session like what actually happens is that our project was sanctioned in 2014 and we could uh, close the project in 5 and 1/2% price escalation other than the r and r related issues so how we achieved it was that in a digital uh, format what we actually intend we intend that there is a planning issue there is a detail design issue and there is a execution issue now all these issues in civil engineering especially remains dynamic if you are executing the project in 5 years so out of 100 plus codes which are applicable many of them will go change during the process many of them go for the conservative side many of them go to uh, the other than conservative side so we have to take advantage of those changes if we have uh, like a platform like rip which is supported by indian code i was just discussing with mr shukla that though we have these uh, softwares we have the bim we have 5d bim but they are made on the international platform they are not supporting the indian codes so if i want to apply the railway bridge code it will not support so i have to do those changes myself so if we digitalize this field design process field and the execution field with the interface with indian codes we can save quite a lot so we did this exercise in case of the geotechnical engineering like uh, just uh, those who are civil engineers and especially all uh, other people will mostly know we don't have uh, like for pile design for the tunnel design we do not have in protocol of geotechnical parameters in india there are no codes for the tunnel design geotechnical parameter fixing so we have to do based on certain international codes so but if we have a ai based system which is supported by digital platforms then the every engineer will get full confidence and we can easily achieve significant savings in execution at design stage itself Uh, this we could do in our both the projects our both underground projects are the first 
Our projects are the first, which entire tunneling has been done by Indian companies, by Indian men, Indian crew. Not even one foreigner work. These are the first two contracts, one by LNT, one by Afcon, done 100% by Indian and done with perfection. So uh, that, uh, that effect can be taken if we digitalize this. And there was no cost increase. In both our uh, projects, there was no cost increase because we could pinpoint the deficiencies which exist between various applicable codes and guidelines. So there is a need to improve. I will uh, urge the industry people that they can improve the RIB and the 5D BIM and make it compliant with Indian codes. That will do a big favor. Similarly, the second point is, I will draw the attention to a frame of reference of US. US typically around, two, they, they had many bridge failures because their bridges were made in the uh, Great Depression time of 2000, uh, 1918 and all. So their bridges started failing. So they had around six lakh bridges in US and their lifespan was specified around 50 years. So there in the, some survey was done in 2017, there are 10% bridges were structurally declared unsafe and the low density traffic and the low load traffic was allowed on those bridges. And uh, at that time it was found that monitoring is very important. Now what actually happens is that like uh, metros work on bridges, viaduct is nothing by bridges. So they require regular monitoring. So there are two ways. Either you neglect monitoring, do less than what is supposed to be done, or you have to incur more cost later on. So changing one bearing costs 30,000 rupees, the item costs only 10,000 rupees. You have to mobilize crane, you have to do this, you have to take man. So what we should do, we should go applica apply sensors, go digital, and IIT Chennai and TCS also developed a software on this, which has not come very much in the domain. They uh, developed a software for the drone use, and IIT Chennai did work. RDSO also has issued instruction for uh, monitoring, digital monitoring of this. But all these things remain in piecemeal. So it has to be an initiative of industry people to put it into a proper use, develop a my expert system on that, and it will be very, very useful because uh, ours in civil engineering, typically half a percent of uh, cost goes per year in maintenance. In systems, in metro systems, roughly 5% cost of the product goes in annual maintenance with a uh, typical 25-year uh, uh, life of the equipment. In civil engineering, 100-year life, 0.5 is the minimum maintenance cost which goes every year that can be drastically reduced. And with this, in overall scenario, if we calculate, two and a half percent of what we are spending on entire metro system in the country, two and a half percent of that is every year going in these maintenance. And that, in my assessment, I made an actual assessment, can be reduced by half by digitalization, by monitoring through sensors, and then doing targeted maintenance. Very rightly, uh, Sadev, you have pointed it out. 5D BIM, probably uh, metros are still not implementing uh, or implementing uh, in stages. I will not say that, uh, in a, or, or I will say in a truncated shape, they are using these models. But all of this 5D BIM can resolve our issues of conflict in the designs and execution to a great extent, which will reduce the cost, which will reduce the time also for implementation. We have with us a uh, person from industry also. Uh, Schneider is with us, which we all know how big is this company and how good the company and equipments they supply. So uh, I will go to you, Ashutosh, that uh, what I see uh, digitalization is basically a social economic context. I'm not talking about uh, technology part, but socio economic concept. Uh, basically uh, involving uh, a process involving substantial change how digital and computer based technologies can be used for the convenience of the people or the convenience of the commuters, if I say, in terms of railway. So, entire supply chains or execution of works, particularly the system works, which are very complicated, which are highly complicated, I would say, can be simplified by use of the digital systems. 
and new business models can be improved upon. So what new in the field we can see in coming years from industry per se and from Schneider in particular. So uh, thank you, Mr. Kumar Kashyap, and good afternoon to everybody. I think uh, uh, digital is not fashionable, first of all. It has to solve a specific problem which our customers are facing, which we as a user of the infrastructure project are facing. So uh, the first thing which we spoke about in the first session also is we have to look at the entire infra infrastructure project in three phases, uh, design, build, operate, and maintain. We, unless we have the full view of, of this uh, uh, entire life cycle of the project, it is very difficult to derive the value at each level. So if I speak about first at the design stage, uh, uh, very optimum uh, tools are available, and, and I think most of the consultants are using it. You know, for example, ETAP for the uh, design, uh, simulation, uh, load flow studies, short circuit, so that we can optimize the equipment. I mean, uh, if, we, if we really go and see today in the industry, are we, are we not using oversized equipment because of you know, our assumptions that has worked in the past? So first of all, how do we do cost optimization uh, on the design phase? Second, we uh, uh, see that we select the right equipment. And third thing which is very important is uh, for a greenfield project, it is much more cost convenient to become digital rather than at the brownfield stage of the project when, when the project is completely running because it's a retrofit thing. And anything which is retrofit costs us more. So how do we, how do we incorporate all those digital equipments uh, during the design stage itself and then reap their benefit over the build and uh, O&M stage? So build right, build digital, and when it comes to uh, uh, what you call a build stage, I, th I think we, we, we all have spoken, we have seen several examples of 5D today calls 6D because the sixth dimension of sustainability has been added to it. So uh, you have, I mean, we, we use 3D BIM modeling in any case today because uh, 2D models are obsolete. We need 3D uh, for sure. So we add uh, time and cost. So your, your, your uh, time, for example, uh, will come from your Primavera kind of scheduling softwares, and then you have, in, you have to integrate SAP, which is bringing the cost angle. And now by doing this, what are we achieving? At the end of the day, I think the bigger question which is coming in everybody's mind is uh, how, how viable these infrastructure projects are. I think Mr. Satish Kumar uh, spoke uh, at length on, on this topic that unless and until you, you can't look at it only from the cost basis because it has a lot of socio-economic effect. You know, people uh, coming from remote part, um, coming to the main metros, working over there. But as an as a industry person, what is our responsibility to see that we do not get into the project overrun costs because the cost itself is high. On top of that, if we add the overrun, it becomes very difficult. So how the digital can help as we speak about uh, the project management software. So one thing which Mr. Kumar Kesha also, also said is about the conflict resolution which we can do, bringing everybody on the common platform. But one of the biggest advantage which I have seen implementing 60 projects uh, at few places is uh, you can plan your progress of the project that if I need to put more resources, how much more time will it take? Is it economical? And also ordering the right raw material at the right time. Instead of you know, getting everything all together or, or not planning it properly, uh, you can see the progress of your uh, project. And the, the single most advantage of this technology comes that you have the digital model of your building available for your next O&M phase. So the things which are going to be done in the O&M phase, if you have it in a digital format, it becomes operation and maintenance very, very easy because you know the locations of each and every equipment and, and, and you know how they are performing and so on and so forth. Now, if we, if we come to the last stage, which is the O&M stage of the project, here 
uh, what we see is today we have so many uh, different systems working in silos. So you have SNT SCADA, you have BMS SCADA, you have attraction SCADA, and then your rolling stock SCADA. These are all, uh, I mean, at the OCC level, they give you some insights for sure, but are we, am I able to fully capitalize these individual SCADA and arrive at a proper, uh, you know, uh, uh, deliverables or actionable points? So we need to have some system of systems, which, which can, you know, uh, uh, kind of overarch all of these and give you the truly uh, advantages inside, actionable inside about what needs to be done. I'll give you one simple example of, uh, of uh, London uh, Underground. They came to us uh, five years back saying that we have a lot of challenge with our, you know, uh, hot wheel uh, health management system. We do not know, you know, how these, how these uh, wheels are performing and uh, when do we do maintenance and so on and so forth. Uh, gentlemen, believe me, with just two simple sensors on the, on the track side, uh, we installed and this lot of data, I can name uh, more than 2,000 data every half a second coming because you know the, the speed at which the train passes and then from every two wheels you're capturing those data and gigabyte of data available because so many uh, trains are running but with that bringing on a common platform, we do compression of this data, we, the AI is been il, uh, inbuilt into the whole system and we exactly know which train number, which wheel, what is the issue, how do we, how do we take it forward. Now these are, these are small things, but then uh, in the field of when you are running in the O&M phase, these are very, very critical and they, they make your decision process much faster. And the, today the need is uh, condition-based monitoring. Sometimes we start maintaining the things because they are written in the books every five years, every six years, every three years. Do we really need to do, do that? I think this point came out very clearly in the previous discussion. So unless we have these right senses in the place, the CBM will remain a dream. And I think uh, every effort should be placed in every part of the infrastructure that how do we bring this down? That's, that's our uh, take in this. Uh, Thank you very much. Probably we will have to sit sometimes separately with you because a lot you have told. And uh, particularly on the system side, I also have this feeling that uh, we are still going ahead with the old sizes of equipment. And many things can be changed. As you said, SCADA for each system, separate SCADA, probably we can think something differently. We have Didi Mishra on our side. He's from Bangalore. So, oh, sir, I am a Maharashtra Metro. Oh, oh yes, yes. And now you, you switched over from <laughs> last time when I met you were in Bangalore. So, no worries. It's fine, fine, oh, fine. Sir, uh, Bangalore <laughs> is uh, my uh, attachment. Okay. Like DMRC, I okay. worked there. So. So, sorry, Misha, I was not aware of your change from and Bangalore sir, to Maharashtra. Also, I have a very emotional attachment. Oh, wonderful. So, you, so you have got attend. experience of so many metros. I'll be four metros. You'll be my fourth metro. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Um, Mishra, I will also like to talk uh, something about the rolling stock, which is very close to my heart. Uh, Satish Kumar ji samne bethe hain. Aur main isliye kahunga ki it is the costliest asset. It is the only moving asset in the metro. And uh, it is the costliest, it is costliest in terms of uh, uh, procurement also, costliest in terms of the maintenance also. Now, lot of 3D platforms, technologies have been developed. Uh, based on that, uh, I understand a lot of uh, designs are being evolved by the rolling stock manufacturers. And uh, now probably at assembly or sub-assembly level, it is very easily easy to visualize how exactly any change will change the overall performance of the vehicle, particularly or the train in, case, in our case. So what more we can think about it? That is one part. The other part is, will it also help this digitization, also help us in reducing our operation and maintenance cost? This was uh, not only particularly to rolling stock, but to other systems also, because now asset management systems are there. So much information, as he was saying, is flowing in, and can it be used for predictive maintenance or condition-based maintenance? Uh, uh, thanks, sir. Uh, sir, of course, uh, as you rightly mentioned, rolling stock in itself is a complete system. It is a, uh, so many subsystems integrate to make uh, this rolling stock and it is most important asset of the metro. It is a kind of a 
फेस ऑफ द मेट्रो बट आई विल हमली लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट सर कि नाउ द टाइम हैज अराइव दैट जस्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट रोलिंग स्टॉक आर वन थिंग इट विल नॉट सफाइस विल नॉट डू जस्टिस विद द डिजिटल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इट हैज गिवेन एस अपॉर्चुनिटी विच डिमांड्स वी शुड टॉक होल सम मैनर सो आई विल विथ योर परमिशन लाइक टू जस्ट एक्सटेंड स्लाइटली कि हाउ रोलिंग स्टॉक वट वी आर डूइंग आर वी कैन डू एज साइमलिनियसली एट मेट्रो ऑपरेटर लेवल एज ए ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लेवल हाउ वी इंटीग्रेट इट आर अदर सिस्टम्स सो माई फर्स्ट पैनलिस्ट राइटली मैंसर्न सो फर्स्ट आई विल लाइक टू फोकस कि वाट वी हैव डन इन अवर महाराष्ट्र मेट्रो फ्यू न्यू थिंग्स ऑफ कोर्स ऑल द मेट्रोज एंड पर्टिकुलरली डी एम आर सी हैज बीन द बेसिकली हेडेड सिंस बिगनिंग टेस्ट दैट वाट इज द कटिज कटिज टेक्नोलॉजी कटिंग एज टेक्नोलॉजी लेटेस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी स्टेट ऑफ आर्ट सिंस लास्ट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स डी एम आर सी टूक द लीड टू प्रोवाइड वेरी एडवांस मेट्रो सिस्टम वर्ल्ड क्लास मेट्रो सिस्टम सो दैट लिगेसी ऑल द क्रेडिट गोज टू डी एम आर सी एंड हैज बीन फॉलोड बाई ऑल द मेट्रो सो टेक्नोलॉजी वाइज एब्सोलूटली मेट्रो ऑल द मेट्रो एक्रॉस ऑल द रोलिंग स्टॉक्स ऑलमोस्ट स्टैंडराइज एंड दे आर एट पार एंड विद द टाइम अ लॉट ऑफ इम्प्रूवमेंट अप टू द दिस विल अनमैन ट्रेन ऑपरेशन यू टी ओ वट इज द लेटेस्ट आई कैन से वेरी प्राउडली वी कैन से एज अ रोलिंग स्टॉक एज अर दैट वर्ल्ड क्लास रोलिंग स्टॉक आर ऑलरेडी इन मेट्रो सिस्टम अवेलेबल नाउ टाइम वट इम्प्रूवमेंट वी हैव डन महाराष्ट्र मेट्रो पुणे मेट्रो पर्टिकुलरली एज आई मैंशन इनिशियली इट इज अ एलमुनियम कार बॉडी फर्स्ट टाइम वी हैव ट्राइड सो इट हैज बीन वेरी ग्रेट अपॉर्चुनिटी द सेंस वेट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू फाइव टू सेवन परसेंट इट इज अ लाइटर कंपेयर टू नॉर्मल स्टील कार बॉडी सो इट इज लाइफ साइकिल कास्ट वाइज इट इज अ अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड सेकेंड पार्ट मेक इन इंडिया I will immediately not can can comment that uh, uh, it is only metro as such. All the metros are making effort. It is a, now right now government rule requirement, but of course it gives delight that uh, as a metro family I can say that uh, uh, we are on the way that very soon, hopefully next five seven years we can proudly say that hundred percent it will be made in India. Something certainly few things are. still propulsion system few things are softwares uh, few things control systems are still we are depending but uh, that is one endeavor otherwise one new thing we are trying to do although it was not part of the contract e, our rolling stock we want to two trends we are trying to implement that our uh, asset monitoring particularly pentograph monitoring system and uh, our track monitoring system all these we want uh, Uh, we are taking up still it is the planning and discussion stage but we want to provide these monitoring systems uh, 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 dynamic monitoring the real time sensing we can do and uh, which will help uh, directly in monitoring the assets and uh, condition monitoring as well as predictive maintenance we can take up it still is in the planning stage we have to implement uh, we will implement at least we have planned that two trains we will uh, basically implement this so apart from that what mr shukla was telling it is not just at the level of rolling stock now it is the time and we are trying that we integrate all the basically uh, data sub system system like rolling stock signaling all these all the assets are basically information there is already digital information available but challenge is different scada system are also available so effort is going on that we integrate and next stage is important that how we use this integration for the passenger facilitate the passenger information and for example i give you from rolling stock uh, we are trying that coach car wise any individual train car wise what will be what are the passengers basically on board that information we are planning we will share with the app which is used by the passenger so any passenger is knowing have the online information real time information that certain train each car this is the load and on based on that he can even decide ki i will board the next train or which car it is a beginning and uh, but i think uh, ultimate goal i believe that this is the time and 
opportunity is a challenge that how we integrate all the information and use basically in the basically spirit of customer friendly uh, use and how make it efficient and second i feel what is needed not rolling stock as well as as a totality ki connectivity of all this system next level we take it to the smart system smart system means decision making now is the time of as we know ai machine learning all these aspects are available technology is not the constraint industry mr astu sukla is here and industry doens are available i think this is the very opportunity for us how we take to that level when automation using the clouds and because we can't afford to burden i am telling you we can't afford to burden our system more infrastructure that will be very costly we can't afford already we are burdened with so much so challenge is that without adding any infrastructure how smartly we can take to the next level cloud management artificial intelligence all these aspect we can add and then it should help us in making dynamic time table when passengers are more how we can utilize all this as an opportunity to cater our services with the existing with the same uh, to crudely say like same rolling stock same everything but using all this basically uh, uh, digital management we we can utilize our assets more third level i like to say and where it is question about sustainability will you me how much smart today we system have whatever we are doing efficient but if it is not compatible with the eco friendliness it is having uh, basically carbon footprint has to be reduced we have to make a green system and simultaneously it has to be economical however we uh, from this dais are we, we basically metro sometime we get by we get emotional we tell you no metro system in the world is a basically um, uh, basically uh, in a running profit all this but fact of life is that if we are not economically sustainable if we don't reduce our capital cost then question will be always there we have to manage so we have to endeavor that how basically we make our assets lighter thinner fit and smarter how we basically use uh, uh, basically uh, uh, leverage the basically market industry to make optimize it so economical uh, we, we make our economical as well as i told uh, mentioned that uh, it, it has to be compatible with the eco friendliness so these are the aspects uh, rolling stock as well as other system integration totality i see that pathway sir thank you sir thank you very much uh, dd sharma uh, with your vast experience uh, so much inputs came and sustainability also came as a one of a very important feature which all of us understand now uh, me also and including probably everybody is very keen to listen to praveen goel now why because he has been changing sides so fast <laughs> from metro to uh, government metro then to consultants to the uh, industry and uh, that brings in a lot of uh, experience with him so we are very eager to listen to you and uh, Uh, what i would like to le listen from you is basically digitization in railway industry which includes asset management because you you ha you were director of systems also in kochi so you are aware of it signaling manufacturing passenger information systems also so all of this digitization is basic idea is that to improve the passenger comfort or customer satisfaction plus to make it economically viable means to increase the revenues or reduce the cost people are now even talking about uh, maintenance as a service even predictive maintenance as a service these concepts have already come up so how do you propose to these in the business development of the industry particularly because where you are at the moment thank you thanks a lot and uh, as uh, mr kumar keshav mentioned that i have been working on both sides of the table and uh, also have seen various facets of the industry uh, besides uh, what i would like to share with all of you is uh, how do we implement the because i have been asked to speak mainly on the maintenance as respect to that uh, so how do we ensure that the digitization has a major impact on the maintenance and finally also on the operation 
So, as already mentioned that digitization can lead to three major advantages, three or four I would say. Uh, one is it can improve the efficiency, energy efficiency, it can improve the operational efficiency, increase the headways, that anyway we all do. The other part is that digitization can help in passenger comfort, so to ensure that the air conditioning is exactly what a passenger would like to have and similar things, the braking is, is very smooth. A lot of digitization actually also goes into that. And the third part is that to ensure that data is available to the maintenance staff to be able to decipher and to be able to determine if the uh, product or if the asset is having any problem. And as has been mentioned by all my fellow panelists that, that uh, there are lot of information that now the metro systems and Indian railways also are gathering in order to have a good maintenance. So as earlier mentioned by Mr. Rati that for civil engineering also, now we are monitoring the bridges uh, using uh, transducers. We are also using, uh, I mean, even, the in the, even in the rail grinding machine, captures a lot of data which can be very useful in deciphering and understanding uh, how the rail is actually being uh, consumed or it is uh, being as the trains are moving. And this can also help us in, in how the, the wheel should be also uh, rolled. So, so the, or the, the kind of shape that the wheel should have. So, so there are various ways in which we can use it. When we come to traction, again, we have had SCADA which is there since 30 years, but now we have a lot sophisticated uh, SCADA which can give you exactly what faults are occurring, what faults are likely to occur. Similarly, we have uh, OHE equipment car which can actually measure the contact wire thickness, can give you the staggers. So a simple run can actually give you a lot of data. When we come to signaling, I mean, uh, the whole thing is practically now becoming virtual and it is going into a digital frame. And there also, all the failures are generally detected themselves by the equipment and also reported by the equipment itself. So that is the level of sophistication that signaling, telecom, etc. have gone. Uh, this is also there. So practically if you see and if you come to rolling stock, uh, we have TIMS uh, which informs all the failures and also each individual equipment also informs like brake control unit informs the failures, the air conditioning informs its failures. So all the failures are available to it, are available and then TIMS is there. Apart from that, uh, they may be reporting the electrical part and the electronics part, but we also have, as someone also mentioned, that we have the, uh, uh, the hot axle box detection system uh, in London Underground, you mentioned that. And then we have the possibility of wheel flat detection. We have a possibility of determining any problems with the pentograph. So these kinds of systems are being implemented by Metro as well as by Indian Railways. So the, this is what we need to look into. Now, what are the challenges in implementing this? Because we have been hearing about this for almost 20, 30 years. Uh, what are the common mistakes that we all make? So, first of all, generally most of our things are half baked, uh, or I wouldn't, uh, I shouldn't put it in that bad a way, but they are generally not fully integrated from beginning to end. So, I still remember in one case, uh, we were, uh, I was from the rolling stock side and we were transmitting a lot of information from rolling stock to OCC, but towards the end we realized that there was no one in OCC to receive the information. So, <laughs> so even though a lot of failures of rolling stock were being reported, there was no recipient and there was no recording to be done. So basically we have to understand the system from end to end. That is one major problem or bottleneck which is there. Uh, in implementing any digital system because either the digital system has to take care of everything including the exceptions or otherwise it will not work. So if we make it very simple, it will not work. We will have to understand all the detailing and the complete system has to be captured. That's one major issue which I find. The second major issue is, is our own mindset even though we have been speaking and we have been telling everyone, uh, we, we find it tough uh, as we grow older as senior to actually use those systems we always find a, a, short, a different uh, way to actually go around that system. The third part is uh, skill development uh, though Indian, India is really speaking <coughs> world's capital as far as IT is concerned 
but I think we are probably very good in database management systems, etc. But when it comes to utilization of digital systems in in the uh, engineering industry, we are still a long way off. So I think we need to work in that area also. Uh, once we, uh, I mean, uh, putting this all together, so basically uh, we have a lot of things which can come out, but a lot of, uh, we need to put our, our minds together, maybe we need to have <coughs> specific discussions on this area. Some workshops, some way by, uh, I think in the beginning someone had mentioned that uh, we, there are different standards and protocols and we keep copying uh, one from Japan, one from Europe and they don't work together. So I think uh, as an as industry uh, within India, we should also uh, group together and try to build some common protocols so that they are all useful to us. So I think that was all I wanted to mention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Praveen. Thank you. So I come back to the gathering. Uh, I hope uh, the panelists here and including me, we have tried to push some points in front of you. May not be fully, but at least discussion points and uh, some questions probably we can take if you permit. Yes. Ashutosh ji, I just want to understand better status of development of software where artificial intelligence is giving a lot of data, which Praveen Goyal was talking about. Has any software come up which can convert it to intelligent advice? AI to IE. That is, so you gather data, but some software intelligence comes up, and automatic advice comes up, this is now to be done. Oh, this need to be done after one year. Yeah. So AI to IE. Yes, uh, yeah. intelligent information to oh, absolutely. So when when we look at IoT uh, as a company, we look at it into three parts, sir. Uh, three layers, I should say. Uh, the first layer is the connected product. So everything connected, we, we believe that you know whether it is rolling stock or your switchboard or your transformer or your you know base, everything are connected. So that's the baseline. So that's the connected level. And the th second layer which goes, we call it as a edge. Now in edge, what is happening, you are monitoring all these equipments at the edge level. So your local SCADAs, you know, your substation automation, this and that, everything being operated and uh, maintained at the local level, at the edge level. Now, these two things are good for those who are actually operating it, you know who are actually, uh, you know, running the, uh, what you call switchyard or, or those kind of thing. But if you look at the person who is in o and 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 I'm given an uh, example of, you know, there are two fitters managing, you know, 20 stations and those kind of things. Now, if this information is available at the edge level, how is this information, because the SCADA is in a room, right? It will be useful to the last person, the fitter, who is on the field, that what's going on if he has to manage 20 stations, say for example. So that is where the top layer, which is called apps and analytics layer, is very, very important to implement. Sometimes we believe that by implementing the SCADA, our job is finished. No, you are only helping the people who are sitting in the rooms. It is not helping the people who are running on the ground. So that apps and analytics layer is very, very important to implement, which means it is getting the, inf you have a historian in your SCADA. Historians are carrying huge number of data, right? And this information, if it stays there, it is of no use to anybody. For example, sir was saying that the rolling stock sent so much of information, but there has to be somebody to take it and make a, a decision out of it. So you have to apply the top layer, which is apps and analytics layers, on top of your individual SCADA. That is where I said the system of the systems, which will get the uh, useful information delivered in a useful and actionable manner to the person who is on the ground. So any sort of technology we can build, I truly believe that if it is not helping the man on the ground, it's of no use. Now this raises the question I did. Yeah. 
If this software can be developed and the advice can be given to a four man level, yes. we won't need second layer of engineers in the yeah. maintenance. Yes. Yes. We won't need today a deputy chief engineer or DGM level sitting. What analysis he can do? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you build a software yeah. that this information coming from yeah. this with this data, it will be due for looking at it after six months, or you have to do this thing. Right. This information goes to say one yeah, yeah. one person, right. and uh, he passes on to the uh, fitter level. Right. So you don't need a second layer at all. Yes. Today, in this uh, mobile, I don't need many things. Yes. I don't go for repair. In TV, I go for repairs for 10 years. Yeah. Why do I require in maintenance a second, third layer yeah. traditionally? Yeah. So how can we build this? Correct. Again, repeat, Correct. artificial intelligence into intelligent advice. Right, right. So uh, just to put it into perspective, you, you need aggregation at some level. You know, yeah, you, analysis. analysis. Analysis what at some is, level. Uh, in general, yeah. there are eight branches of artificial in, uh, of, uh, intelligence. So one is collecting a data. Other is an engineer who is designing this. Third is a person who is analyzing it. So if this analysis and the approach can be built in, which manufacturers can do very easily, yeah, yeah, yeah. perhaps uh, maintenance cost will go down. Absolutely, absolutely. Because that is where we say apps layer, because you have to, the, 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 the person on the field should have an application on his mobile. Clearly running, saying that pump number this at this particular station has a problem, it has stopped or it is overflowing, some information, some actionable thing, so he knows. He, he, he doesn't have to, you know, be, be everywhere. Uh, he has to only manage the critical problems which he has to attend. That is where the, now why do we, why do we, if we look at uh, Google map, for example, Automatic. Absolutely, absolutely. Sir, uh, Google Map is a very critical and a very clear example of this. It not only tells me how much time I will take to reach, it tells me the shortest route as well. And more importantly, it tells me how much traffic is ahead, right? Now, this information is very, very cr uh, critical to me. It gives me the alternate paths. So, what is it giving? Is it, is it giving me only the route? No, it is giving me the intelligence to act and be more efficient on, on the ground. That, that's, that's the kind of uh, thing which you are asking, I think. And every technology operator has this moral duty and the social duty to, to deliver this kind of end result. Uh, Mr. Goel, but he raised a point. In 20 metros today, we would have more than hundreds of engineers at a higher level. Now, if they put all together the brain work and somebody develops a software, practically, I find the, all the equipment will tell you what you require. Today, if I'm sitting at this one, somebody asked me on the TV, uh, have you switched on this, do this, and this is over. They are not visiting now. They are guiding only sitting there, even airtel, other things. Why can't we do even for maintenance here? So, uh, it's quite a challenge, I would say. It's not very easy to be able to use the data. And as you mentioned very clearly that the question was that what layer or can we have an AI layer where we can do a scrubbing of data, where we can make uh, meaning out of it. Because if you just take an air conditioning data, uh, let us say from an air conditioner, you will find that the amount of information it gives you is overwhelming. So, again you need some layer as mentioned by, uh, by Anupam that you require an app which will practically bring only the useful information uh, out of it. So, I think if that is done and that is something which is really missing and that requires uh, some amount of AI and some amount of analysis, if both the things are put together, that will be very useful. Somehow, I am not able to think of many examples uh, where uh, this kind of a thing has been successfully implemented and used. Banks have done it. Which one? Banks have done it. Banking yeah, industry. Today, if you apply for loan, they yeah, so they are able they to. Are, they went from a mess of data, 
they, can, they tell you that the person is fit for this or not. The point I was making is, India is already at 810 kilometers. After 5-10 years, it will be 2,000 kilometers uh, of metros in India. So probably we need a startup here now, also. Now, if you start today, <laughs> at least after 5 years, we will have something. Yeah, because in the bank, this kind of a revolution could never have been expected by big banks. It came only from startups who actually were able to analyze. In fact, they are also analyzing the SMS that is being sent to us. And based on that, they are able to determine our credit and debit history. So here I was saying, why not the manufacturers of ruling stock so I think start we, with? Yeah, we, we why not others to start with? So if we insist for that, ask for these things, perhaps after five years we'll have, where we will require one third of the person for maintenance. Certainly, I, I, I cannot agree more on that. Uh, I'm Bengtisho Chaturvedi from uh, DFCCIL. I just want to ask a question from uh, Praveen, sir, is uh, digitalization is uh, helpful to prevent the failures or avoid the failure itself? Yes, yes, certainly, most certainly it is, uh, the basic purpose is to, uh, to detect a failure before a failure occurs, that is the basic purpose. And generally what has been happening is that we have been going with time-based maintenance. Now if we can go with... Uh, Yes, sir. I would like to add, our problem is not that uh, we are lacking in maintenance or we are failing. We are doing more maintenance. That is the problem. Do we have the self-rectification system in uh, digitalization? So, I mean, self-rectification is one of the trickiest and toughest things to do. I mean, batteries do it, but then there is a cost involved which is basically short circuit and fire which do, does happen. So, so every time we do a self-rectification, uh, I mean SCADA does it, a lot of other, but there are always uh, uh, pros and cons for it. So uh, in most of the cases, the failure is detected and reported, someone has to receive it and then do take some action. Self-rectification is not very common. Yeah, uh, if uh, sir permits, I, I would like to add here, it is connected with this, like 5D beam, one application, very good thing is happening in uh, Nagpur Pune Metro, that uh, in this platform, uh, all the asset, normally challenges by that each system wide, we were maintaining maintenance manuals, so many things, so when uh, any failure happens down the time, uh, say after four, five years, it is difficult to find drawings, it is difficult to connect with maintenance manuals. So, so what we have done by this asset tagging, each asset terminated either civil infrastructure side or ruling stock. So we are loading all the drawings, related drawings, manufacturer drawings, maintenance manuals, all the maintenance protocols. So I am not telling that everything will be very well and fine, some very challenges to use it. But certainly it is in very right direction that all the documents, everything needed are uh, for the future, it, they are available. It is going to help. But probably these thi such things of integration will be needed for further as sir was telling. When we go for artificial intelligence or such decision we have to make, even through software, such inputs will be needed. So such preparation is needed. It is certainly a long journey. But uh, one thing maybe we like or dislike, but uh, our survival is there only. We have to do it. Sir, presently By we this are, or that way. Presently we are getting the information about all the failures. We don't have the arrangement of rectification yet, sir. Yes, exactly. That is the AI purpose is this one. System should be smart enough, intelligent enough to correct itself. Like our, we can take simple example our smartphone. 99% it's defects, basically if it is not hardware problem, 99% problem or software problem, it diagnoses, it corrects itself. Just even sometimes you simply it reset it, it corrects. So we have to think that level. Maybe right now it looks maybe, um, uh, we can mock ourselves that uh, what we are talking, uh, how it is possible. But certainly it, is, it will happen, it will happen. If we are talking about the high speed trains and all these arrangements, I, I think we are in need of all these arrangements. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Why can't this problem be given to IITs? These are the systems available with us. Analyze this. Do a PhD on this. We turn out 5,000 PhD engineering, but 
it is not put in public use yet so let the what is required in uh, service now the metro cost is 5 lakh crores some people should work on that who should do this thank you sir uh, i may not be knowing fully but uh, to you jo mujhe aata hai wo bolunga main ye sochta hu sir ki this is already being done i am talking only about uh, rolling stock the way we have awarded ncrtc first time they have gone for rolling stock procurement and maintenance for 15 years we are interacting with the alstom team also they are the rolling stock supplier all other asset management services are with us so we are discussing with them they are already talking about the condition based maintenance so they will certainly be analyzing their data the whole team will not be sitting here the way like a conventional metro is there they are setting up their own call centers maybe here maybe in their manufacturing uh, facilities from where they will guide the lower staff so certainly it is bound to happen uh, more and more we pass on this maintenance to the industry right now what has happened that industry has supplied us certain equipments and we start uh, maintaining it by our own background of the old way of maintenance the moment suppose i uh, put the uh, ohe and give it for the 15 years of maintenance then you will see all this will start they will start collecting the data analyze them work out how it can be minimized ultimately operation and maintenance cost has to be minimized excellent this is a self contained pressurization on quality improvement yes sir if i have to maintain the train i will build the equipment in that which i don't need to look at so quality improves you need not check even sir so, i am yogi sir that you shall tell us uh, condition monitoring when it is due have give a software with that रिगार्डिंग ऑपरेशन ऑफ द रनिंग लाइन्स आई थिंक इन द पैनल देर इज एमिनेंट पर्सन फ्रॉम द ऑपरेशन के सब सर इट सेल्फ हैविंग रन ए फास्ट नेटवर्क i have a question that right now we are discussing about the digital future of urban rail so in terms of operation whenever we are dealing with any disruption of services this metro rail industry where we stands how to deal with the disruption in terms of number of trains we have to pull up number of trains we have to keep out of the loop number of stations we have to keep running in terms of uh, uh, dealing with the passengers how we are able to handle with all such situations right now and how we will able to handle in the future when there will be major disruption in our services either kesab sir or uh, from lnt Mr. Sudhir sir, yeah, I think that's a good question. But we all metro operators, first of all, hope that we don't encounter a major disruption which you are uh, asking about. But nevertheless, in case such situation comes, what are our operation plans to mitigate that situation? So one of the best, um, I, I will say, the advantage of metro system is that we have an automatic fare collection system which gives us a precise data. about what kind of passengers what number of passengers are available at each point of time at each each node of my network and that data is certainly very very helpful for organizing my operation plan as to where i want to run the trains or where what is the shortest portion which can be like um, uh, uh, contained for uh, disruption and rest of the network can be how quickly it can be restored or remobilized just to give an example to you about it is not related to disruption but recently we had a t20 match in hyderabad which is a stadium is a station which is close to the uh, the state the station itself is named as a stadium and uh, the match was to end at about 11:30 whereas our normal services finished by 11 itself so that day we plan to extend the services and as you know when the match ends a complete 35000 capacity of crowd is going to come at once to the station and to cater for that kind of traffic you have to have some operational strategy and plans so what we did is we we checked into the past as to when the last match was happened 
we got the data about what kind of people actually used our metro system, what were their original station and for that then we decided okay this is the kind of people who are going to come from various fare zones and we kept the return tickets in advance, pre-booked tickets of that fare zone and people when they come that time itself we started distributing them with those kind of options and that helped us a lot in basically discharging the crowd early after the match was over. So these kind of information comes because we had an AFC system which could throw us a data of what happened on 6 December 2019 when last match was held and what kind of people came from various sources. I think that example can be further extended to uh, the disruption things also because you have the data available. I'm not sure if I answered your question but this is best I, I tried myself. Half a minute if you permit. I will just not answer your question. I don't have an answer for that. But I can uh, narrate an incident which shows you I'm not talking about disruption. I'm talking about extremely different situation where a lot of people come. 19th of September, British Queen's funeral date. I was in London. You can't think of the crowd which was in London. You order a taxi, it cannot come. Everybody is on road. Half an hour, we kept on waiting from place to place. There is no way you can travel. Buses are not traveling. There is no space on the road. Then we went to London Underground. It was so good. 100% traffic is going to London Underground. Queues, 40 people in front of the gates, access fair gates. Each train they are traveling is coming information. The space is available in the first coach or the third coach. Entire traffic was handled by the London Underground. Next day, all newspaper appreciated only London Underground. So there must be a way to improve these operations which you are talking about. I don't have an answer, but probably London Underground can tell how they manage the traffic on that particular day. Thank you. Thank you so very much uh, to each of our panelists right here and of course to Mr. Kumar Kesha for really moderating this session, putting it all together so very well. To thank our panelists and to thank our moderator, may I now please extend a very warm welcome to Mr. Indrajit Saoji on stage yet again along with Mr. Abhishek Bachori. So a round of applause as I welcome both the gentlemen uh, here on stage to take this movement further, present our speakers with the uh, token of our appreciation along with uh, my promise to all all of you interactive um, uh, audience members that we have some very spectacular prizes and gifts coming your way. <laughs> <laughs>